Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Now, a lot of the ch videos on this channel deal with kind of more complex natural language processing or machine learning types things in Python, but I thought in this video we'd take a step back and talk about something that might be a little bit more uh, uh, relatable or accessible to newer Python programmers and kind of some best practices on how you can structure your code and also maybe some really useful uh, method, or method functions that you can use that are built into Python already. And we're gonna be specifically talking about zip and enumerate, when to use them, why, how to use them, and specifically why. So we have two lists as we can see right here. Now we have names and ages. So if I were to iterate over each of these, I could say for name and names, print name, and then I could do maybe something like for age and ages, print age. And I'm going to get those, they're iterating over two separate times. Now, some of you all might be thinking that's, I want to see these kind of match together in some capacity. So we could do something, and again, this might be, this will work, but it might not be the best way to do it. Um, I could say for name and names, and then I can make a little i outside of here is equal to zero. And I can say print name. And then I can say something like, i is equal to i plus one. So take that i up each time. And let's go ahead and print off i as well. And we see that we've got uh, zero, one, and two. So with that variable, I could do something like ages and grab those at the same time. Now this works, this, this is fine. And a lot of the videos on this channel, I typically do something like this because it's really kind of easier to read for, for newer programmers, which is a lot of my audience. But I thought I'd introduce something that I use in my workflow that most people do who uh, program on a regular basis. And these are the zip and enumerate functions. So we can do this exact same thing that looks a little cleaner, looks a little bit more polished, looks a little bit more professional. So I can say for name, age, comma, in each of these, and zip. Now what zip does, it's a function that will bring together two separate data sets or two separate lists essentially, and allows for you to iterate over them simultaneously. So I can say names and ages separated out by a comma, and now I can print off name and age, and I get the exact same right. Now, why is this a better way to do it? It's not better from a point of view of just making it work better. It's gonna work the exact same way as what we did in the cell above. However, it is a tighter way to do your code and it looks more polished and it lets you leverage what's already built into Python, which is the zip function. Now, another thing that we saw was that I was also grabbing the I as a, a way of ticking up inside of a loop. So let's say I also needed to go ahead and do that. I needed to have an I that would iterate each time. So I could do what I did where I had an I outside and I ticked up each time. That's easy to read if you're if you're new to Python. That's why I typically will do that on this channel. But there's a better, probably more professional or polished way to do that. And that's with enumerate. So I can say for name and names and print off name. But if I needed to actually have that integer, I can wrap names inside of the enumerate function. Now let's take a look at what's gonna happen if I do this, I'll get an error, or it'll actually print off automatically. Uh, one of the things that I need to do though is I want these pieces of information to be separated out. And to separate them out, I'd like to actually be able to grab this first, uh, this first uh, index in that list. So I could do something like i is equal to um, name zero, and I could do something like name is equal to name uh, one, and then I can print that off and it looks like it's gonna work just fine, but this is a little clunky. A better way to actually do this is to create two separate things or two separate variables that are being created in the loop by separating out the I and the name originally. Remember, what enumerate is doing for us, as you just saw, is it's creating a list every time we iterate over something. So we're getting both an integer, so the number that's being iterated up each time and also the actual object that we're iterating over. So the, the name and the names list. And if I were to do it this way, I get the exact same result. Again, not necessarily better from a, it's doing it better or it's, it's producing a better result. The results are the exact same, but this looks a little bit more polished, a little cleaner. And again, it's letting you take advantage of something that is built into Python. So if you're new to Python, this might be something that might look a little scary if you encounter it in someone's code without having any idea about what it actually is. 
but this video hopefully gives you a sense of what uh, the zip function looks like and the enumerate functions look like, how to go about using them, when to use them, and I encourage you to spend a little bit of time and maybe using them in your workflow if you're moving from that beginner Python coder to maybe that intermediate level. This is, these are the kind of subtle things that'll set your code apart. They'll make it look better and make it look a little bit more polished. Again, these are optional things though. They work the exact same way as the things that we saw above. It just looks a little bit better. That's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you found these two little tips and tricks useful and hopefully you'll start using them in your own workflow. Um, that's gonna be all for this video though. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, like and subscribe down below. If you wanna get um, uh, more content like this, do let me know. I can give, do start doing weekly videos that are tips and tricks, little things like this. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, as always, thanks to all the members and Patreon supporters on this channel. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider it supporting it via one of these platforms, both of which are linked in the description down below. Thank you.